Hello and welcome to The Pig Edge. My name is Gerard McCutcheon and this is your monthly podcast for all your pig farming news and advice. In this episode, I'm joined by Chagas tillage specialist, Mark Plunkett, who is going to talk today on using pig manure in order to help farmers that use this pig manure save money and get the best out of the pig manure. It very much just starts with uh, taking a soil sample and looking at major nutrients such as pH, P and K. Really, the first place to start is getting the pH right and optimizing that pH to a pH of 6.5 for tillage crops and then looking at your P and K requirements and your crop requirements and applying those, nutri- or those nutrients as efficiently as possible during the growing season. And while, Mark, I suppose while we concentrate on tillage farms uh, today in this podcast, it's probably true that a lot of what you say is equally applicable in the, in the grassland situation. Absolutely, Ger. Um, the very same applies in the grassland situ- situation. It very much starts with getting the soil samples, putting a fertilizer plan together for the farm and seeing how much um, organic manure you can import on the grassland farm. So I suppose the, the main difference is really that um, you must look at the organic end loading on the grassland farm um, you know, ordered animals that, that will determine how much organic manure that you can import. The very same will apply on a, a tillage farm. Um, again, we're working to the, the 170 kilos of orga- organic end limit. And that again will determine how much organic manure you can bring in on a, a tillage farm during the, the growing season. It is often suggested, Mark, that tillage farmers and pig farmers could work together uh, more. Do you think that there is scope for tillage farmers in Ireland to use more pig manure to save themselves some money? Yes, I I think there's a very good opportunity there for tillage farmers um, to control their their, or reduce their their fertilizer costs. And also there's an aspect as well, Jared, that we generally don't think about organic manures. And that is that we're bringing in organic matter and carbon into our soils. And we're very much feeding the biology in the soil, like as well as supplying NP and K on, on the chemical side and uh, helping reduce uh, bag fertilizer, that there's a big benefit there to improving soil health by bringing organic manures onto tillage soils. Very good. What value would you say a thousand gallons of pig manure is worth? And is there a chemical uh, fertilizer equivalent to that? Well, if you take a, 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 a typical value um, in terms of NPK, for pig slurry is at, at 4%. So we're talking a good quality pig slurry, 4% dry matter. Um, it's equivalent to a, a bag of a 19,720. And that's 19 units of available nitrogen, seven units of available P and 20 units of available po- uh, potassium. And that's worth 24 euros per thousand gallons. Now that will change depending on fertilizer prices, but that's where we are at, at the minute. And in terms of equivalent to bag fertilizer in the marketplace that's widely used would be something like at 13,620. So your 19,720 in your pig slurry would be, you know, along the lines of a 13,620 that would be widely used um, on tillage farms here in Ireland. And then if we're going to become a little bit more precise in that, is there any way of assessing the level of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium uh, that may be in a, in a sample of slurry? Yes, um, Jar, we've done done quite a bit of research in this area um, on pig manures and, and tillage crops and also on the analysis and, and different methods of analysis. But one of the key findings that would have come from the work that, that I would have done with Martin Burke up in Arklow um, and also inside in Oak Park is that actually testing the manure is very, very important. In order to use it efficiently, it is important to know what's in the manure. It's like if you buy a bag of fertilizer, you know that it's an 18612 or a 13620 or a 101020. So in the pig manure, we need to know the same. So there is a number of methods there, Ger. Um, the slurry hydrometer was developed in Johnstown Castle. Um, it's an on-farm tool for testing the dry matter of the slurry. So this is a it's a it's a glass uh, piece of apparatus. It's quite fragile, and you need to be careful when using it. But if you get a liter or a cylinder container that will take a liter of cattle slurry, um, and fill it up, and um, get an, a well agitated sample of slurry, and gently lower or drop the slurry hydrometer into the container of pig slurry, you can read off the slurry dry matter, and it's a very closely aligned to the slurries available in P and K content. 
they are a low cost uh, piece of equipment. You can do it on farm. Um, you can also get take a sample and send it off to the laboratory and it can give you a more accurate reading for its NPK content. And Mark, let's say to follow on from that, over the years, you've done a number of demonstration uh, farm um, presentations throughout the country to promote the use of pig manure on tillage farms. Could I ask you, what are the most important points that a pig farmer, a supplying pig slurry to a tillage farmer needs to be aware of? As we just discussed, Jared, very, very important that we know the nutrient content of the pig slurry. So, you know, pig slurry coming from the, the piggery, you know, needs to be of a consistent supply. It's also very, very important that it's well agitated and mixed up before application. What I would see is very important that it's applied evenly um, and ploughed in rapidly um, after application to reduce nitrogen loss. And again, for somebody starting out and maybe want to explore taking pig slurry onto their tillage farm, I would encourage you to apply somewhere in the region of about 1,500 to 2,000 gallons per acre. Um, you know, in terms of it supplying NPK and replacing bag fertilizer um, for, for your crop. What proportion of the total nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium do you think they, a farmer, a tillage farmer could save using pig slurry on, on a crop such as, say, spring barley? Well, if you take spring barley, Jerry, you could replace somewhere in the region of about 30 to 40 percent of the crop's nitrogen requirement. And also you could replace um, somewhere in the region of 50 to 60 percent of the crop's P and K requirement. So, you, you know, you, you could supply, you know, a proportion anywhere from a third to half of the crop's NPK requirement uh, with the, the pig slurry. Um, and then you would balance the, the crop's remaining requirement up with a, you know, a suitable fertilizer, something like a, a 15, 320 or a 13, 620, depending on the soil fertility status, depending on what's in your, in your fertilizer plan for that part of your farm. Mark, if there, if there are a number of tillage farmers listening to this podcast, um, how should they sort of pro, uh, begin the process of using pig slurry on their farm? Well, I, I think it very much starts with, um, I suppose, looking at your locality, seeing is there a readily available supply, um, talking to your, your advisor or your consultant, and looking at the soil test results, um, looking at the crops on your farm, and, and looking, you know, what is their requirement? And again, I suppose it's to develop that relationship with a, a pig farmer and to see how can that pig slurry then um, be made available or, or become available on your farm. So it's the type of thing really that they would, they would use some the first year and learn from that experience rather than going out and using a huge amount of it and, and uh, trying to save money, let's say, instantly as such. Yes, yes. I, I, I think, Jar, maybe look to maybe pick a field or two on the farm or maybe even split a field half and half. Maybe do your standard practice on one side of the field and then, um, you know, apply, as, as we were saying, 1,500 to 2,000 gallons of pig slurry, uh, plow it in rapidly to, to save the nitrogen and then make, make the adjustment in terms of the bag fertilizer and again work with your advisor um, on you know in terms of you know the most suitable fertilizer then um, and when to apply that fertilizer um, to ensure that the crop has sufficient levels of nutrients in, in the early stages of development. Very good. From uh, you mentioned Mark soil carbon earlier on and um, if you were using say five, five and a half thousand gallons of uh, pig slurry per hectare or 25 cubic meters um, of slurry per hectare, what level of soil carbon uh, would you be adding to the soil approximately? And, and uh, what's the advantage of, of uh, doing that, may I ask you? Okay, Jar, if you, if you take um, two and a half thousand gallons per acre or 25 cubic meters per hectare, we're adding approximately 0.4 of a ton of, of carbon and there's about 20% of that carbon gets retained in the soil. And its role in the soil is very much feeding the biology or the biological um, function in the soil. So it feeds the microbes, um, the fungi, the earthworms, and they break that down and produce something, something that we call humus. And it contains a very available form of NP and K. Also that, humus and that organic matter 
it's very much like the soil glue. It actually glues the soil particles together. So you get bigger and larger, more stable aggregates. So those soils will be more resistant to soil compaction. And also they'll be more resistant to, say if you've got a, a drought, like as we've had in, in, you know, over the last number of seasons there in 2018 and also in 2020, that that organic matter or that humus in the soil will supply nutrients and it'll also supply moisture. So it gives your crops that little bit more resilience um, from, a, from a soil compaction point of view. And also then if we get some extremes during the growing season. So yes, I would see a big benefit to bringing that organic matter or that carbon in on continuous tillage soils to feed that biology, which will also help structure and the resilience um, of our soils going forward. Very good, Mark, because it's an area, I suppose, it's probably overlooked. Um, and, and when we talk about fertilizing farms, we, do, we don't talk about, about carbons uh, very often. Mark, if I can change direction a little bit, would you mind talking a little on the low emission spreading equipment or LESS equipment as we, as we now uh, talk about? What's the benefit of using this type of equip equipment to spread organic fertilizers such as pig manure? One of the biggest benefits, Ger, is that it reduces the loss of nitrogen at the time of application. So if you take a, a trailing shoe or a band spreader, it places the slurry very close to the soil in a narrow band, so it reduces its surface area. So that reduces the loss of volatilization um, directly after, after application. Um, you also get a more precise application of the nutrients across the, the spread width. Um, and also it probably re re reduces the, um, I suppose, the, the speed to plow in slurry compared to a, a splash, play, splash plate um, type operation. It also reduces odor and smells. So again, it's a very, um, it's a more friendly way or a more efficient way of, a, of applying slurry. But what the big benefit is, is that it reduces the loss of nitrogen during and after application. Very good. And a, a band spread mark is, is a, for one of these uh, new sort of uh, low emissions spreading uh, equipment types. How much will the band spreader give you in, in terms of nutrient return versus a conventional splash plate? The, the research on, on cattle slurry would, would show about uh, three units per thousand gallons. Um, I'd imagine for pig slurry, um, you could be talking maybe four to five units per thousand gallons as the pig slurry is, is a lower dry matter slurry and it moves into the soil quickly. So you know, there's a big benefit there in capturing or retaining more of that nitrogen um, that crops can utilize during the growing season. And therefore we are more confident in reducing our chemical nitrogen on that crop. And in, in a grassland situation, if we change to there, would you see an advantage mark to using the trailing shoe over the band spreader? I suppose the, the big difference, Ger, between the trailing shoe and the band spreader um, is that you know that the trailing shoe is is placing the slurry you know you know basically is splitting the grass canopy and putting the slurry very very close to the soil so i suppose that the big benefit would be if you're applying say slurry onto maybe say after first cut silage for example that the trailing shoe will be that little bit ahead of the the band spreader because the band spreader is up up from the ground and is dropping the slurry down onto the soil, so you you know in that situation you may see maybe a unit or two per thousand gallons of a benefit for the trailing shoe, but if you had a grass canopy or a grass cover, you'll probably see little difference between the band spreader and the trailing shoe, as the canopy will give some protection or or it will reduce that loss of ammonia directly after application. Then this, the, let's say, I suppose one last question, Mark, in terms of ammonia emissions and losses, uh, you mentioned them there in, in, in your response. How, how important, let's say, is it, um, how important is this type of equipment in reducing ammonia losses? And have you a general comment on the ammonia losses from agriculture? Well, Ger, I suppose it, it's one of the key technologies in, in the agriculture produces 98% of the ammonia and um, it is one of the key technologies in in Irish farmers um, reducing or, or um, reducing ammonia losses from slurry um, uh, during and after application. 
So it, it really is something we're going to see and hear a lot more of, and it's going to become really the new norm, I would expect, in terms of how slurry is spread over the years to come. I think so, Jar. I think it's a, it's um, definitely a big step forward um, in the whole area of slurry application. And again, retaining more of that nitrogen, this is how we make the, the cost savings in terms of nitrogen fertilizer. And it also gives us more confidence uh, to make those adjustments during the growing season. So it's an environmental uh, solution and it's also, let's say, cost effective or, or certainly is giving you a return on, on using this type of equipment. Correct. Mark, listen, I'd like to say thank you very much for uh, taking time to talk to us today. No, no problem, Ger, and thank you very much. That's all for this episode of The Pig Edge, and my thanks to Mark Plunkett for joining me on the show today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify so you never miss a show. And for more farming information, go to chagask.ie. I'm Gerard McCutcheon. Thanks for listening, and The Pig Edge will be back next month more pig farming news and advice.